Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. We are live uh, here in Parkville, Missouri, Kansas City suburb, just to the north. So, uh, look, you can see Sophie in the background. Sophie over here, our B. Sean, she's laying on the, well, that's not, where am I? Gosh, <laughs> backwards. There she is. Back there laying on the top of the chair. Melanie is sitting right here uh, for our, our family affair. And she's going to be my producer. Um, and quite honestly, hello, Steve. Yep. And fellow bird lovers, this is Steve from South Alabama. And Janzart, greetings, Mark, watching from Belton, Missouri, here in the Kansas City region. Absolutely. Welcome in. Uh, tonight's topic is one of the least favorite topics, especially for the retail part of my world, uh, the brick and mortar store. Um, we affectionately call it the September slowdown. Uh, it is, it, we actually, the first early part of September was pretty good, but boy, it has really slowed down here in the last week or so. And uh, those are that signs of things to come and, our, and we deal with it. And that's, so I thought that'd be a really good topic tonight is to talk about why it's happening and kind of some things you probably should do for your birds uh, and for yourself. Uh, because you know, it, it, we this is a time of year that seed stays in your feet are longer. It could go bad. We have bug problems. We have moisture problems. Things like that. So those are the kind of the topics that we are going to be uh, talking about tonight. So so let's welcome in a few people and see. There's Jan's art from Jan's art from Belton. Welcome in, Steve, our real regular from South Alabama. You know, uh, it, it, always a, a, a reminder that, you know, we are here in Kansas City, in the middle of the country, and you guys are checking in from all points of the compass. And so it really helps if you will check in, let us know where you are, uh, especially when we're trying to answer a question because it will affect uh, dates and things are going on. Um, you know, I've been having questions from people up north this week and, and also uh, down south. So uh, we, we do our best to try to answer them the best of our ability. And let's see, delightful gardens about Debbie. Hi, Elf. One of my Pennsylvania folks checking in. Absolutely. Montreal, welcome in. Let's see. Calliope from another uh, Canadian, uh, right, uh, Toronto area. Great. Absolutely. Welcome in. New Jersey, Alyssa, thank you. Absolutely. Welcome in. Ah, Jen G from Maine. We love it. Melanie and I love it. We honeymooned in Maine. We still love that. Yeah, yeah, things are really starting to change up that far north, I bet. Ryan, I think it has rose for me for migration birds. Yep, good. Maybe some increased activity. Absolutely. Hi, Raj. Yep, I, I, I didn't see you. I know you were trying to make, might have tried to make the hike today. We had our Thursday morning bird hike out at Wyandotte County, and it was like it was pretty slow today. It was not a great morning of bird watching. Um, Marcia from Orlando, Florida, welcome in. Ryan, Ryan from Jacksonville, Florida. So we are definitely getting some uh, a lot of Southern people here tonight. Birdman from Houston, Texas, G and J, welcome in. Hello, Ellie. Ellie, one of our regular customers at the store right here in Kansas City. Kate May County, New Jersey. Mary Lou Mawson, you are known for your hawk migration out there in Cape May. You're one of the best places in the country to watch hawk migration. Sandy from Kankakee County. I recognize that name. Welcome in. I think you're going to see my, some of my real regular people. Ola from Pennsylvania. Welcome in. Roscoe. Hi, Mark. In the community. Steel Monkey, I've answered a couple of questions this week. I know we've been communicating from Cape Cod, another great uh, migration uh, along the shore there. You get, you get up in that part of the world. Let's see. Oh, we jumped. Rebecca, uh, the American goldfinch numbers were pretty strong here in the heart of the country, I know. Now, of course, they're all moving out into the... Uh, the, the weedy field edges, as we say this time of year, and they're starting to molt they're, because the males are losing that bright yellow plumage. But uh, I don't know if you guys are up north, it, you kind of let what you, you know about that because we start getting the northern migrants uh, in the, the goldfinch world here uh, real soon. All right, let's see. 
Nothing else where I missed. Yep. All right. Is that G from Illinois? Welcome in. Beneath the willow tree from West Virginia. I love it. Beautiful state. Absolutely. Carol, it was on the hike this morning. Welcome in. Carol and Jay. Okay, there's that one. So I'm trying to catch up here. Joanna from Maine. Another Maine. All right, here's some one of my Western people. There you go, Denise from Washington State. Well, guys, welcome in. I, 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 thank you for joining in. We've uh, uh, it, It's been an exciting week for us. Um, I, I know David from Rhode Island hadn't checked in yet. He communicated that, that to, with me a while back about how uh, he really hopes that, uh, that one of my videos would, would, would really get a lot of attention and, and, and go wild and, and, and hopefully raise the, uh, this whole YouTube experience for us. And, and last night, the, the Monday night, the video we posted Monday night did really, really well. It became instantly has become the best uh, received and watched video of, uh, for us. And the, the numbers just skyrocketed and we're very excited. You know, it's, uh, you know, we easily average 250, 300, something like that in the first 48 hours. And this one is uh, just over 48 hours and is up, where is it now? hundred and some, Hold on a second. Look at it was like 163,000 or something. It just blew up. So, and it's all about the, not storing your bird seed inside, which is a topic we are going to glaze on tonight. But hopefully you got to watch that video. Um, it, evidently, uh, Google did something for me because it really got a lot of play. Yeah, it's uh, uh, so thank you all for all that support. That it's amazing, and and we we love it, and uh, and it, we know people are you know getting the information. Rebecca and Shawnee Forest in Southern Illinois. We have relatives in Kell, Illinois. I don't know if that's close to there, and they're in the center of the state. All right, Frontier from Southern California. Excellent. Welcome in. Super cute dog on the chair back there. Yeah, yeah that is Sophie. Um, Sophie is uh, our Bichon, and she's almost 15 years old, and she is still pretty spry. We always said she's more cat than dog. She's kind of an aloof animal, but she is. she's a sweetheart. All right. Oh, there's Melanie coming, and there you go. All my regular fees left a few weeks ago. Very quiet in New Hampshire. Thank you, Roscoe. Well, let's talk about that. Let's get into it now and, and talk about what is going on. And you're right. Um, you know, bird feeding has slowed down tremendously. Um, you know, this is a, just a picture of my Mark's No Waste Blend that we sell at the store, and it's a hollow seed. Well, the one of the reasons I chose this to start with is because when – when bird feeding slows down, and in, that is happening right now uh, for a lot of us. Now, you guys to the north, it probably is like, no, they, it started a couple of weeks ago or even maybe a month ago, uh, but, but gradually moving south. And I know down, maybe you, know, you guys down south of Steve in Alabama, your, your feeders might still be uh, quasi normal. But I remember when I bought this business um, 2002. The guy, and I, of course, had been in the business for to be at a nature center world and sold birdseed and everything. But it, one of the things John, the owner previous to me, said, when the hummingbirds leave, Mark, keep a good book around the store. And you know, that's, you know, that we've affectionately <laughs> come up with uh, September slowdown because those those things coincide. The hummingbirds leaving and, and, and migrating south, other birds leaving too. Uh, Orioles, of course, have been gone and, and a lot of migrants passing in. And before the, you know, the winter uh, juncos and white-throated sparrows and pine siskins and uh, a lot of those birds that we count on in, in our feeder stations during the winter, they're not here yet. They're gradually pushing south. Now, yesterday we had a report of three um, red cross bills just to the north of us. So there is some movement in, in those winter invaders or winter birds that visit our bird feeders. And you ask about the goldfinches. Uh, my goldfinches all summer, I tend to have, or in my area, I usually have about 12 to 15. By December, I will have close to 100. And most of those are northern birds. Most of those come from Nebraska and the Dakotas and, and parts north where their world gets covered in snow. But those birds are yet to come in. So we're in that lull in between um, that uh, of some birds leaving and some birds arriving. But the biggest culprit of all 
is Mother Nature. Mother Nature is really providing for the birds right now. And that is there's still plenty of insects. There's still caterpillars around. But there's also this bountiful supply of natural food. And this is American Beauty Beauty Bush is a beautiful wildflower. I love it. And uh, they, you know, whenever there's natural food like this, and this happens in the fall, we call it nature's bounty. And there's lots of berries and there's lots of grass seeds and there's lots of uh, acorns falling. And man, the walnuts on our hike today just saw just trees just loaded and loaded with them. So, uh, you know, nature's bounty is kicking in and Birds are doing what they're supposed to do. The birds that the resident birds that do not leave your area are eating on the natural food supplies that are there. And wherever you are, you know, you, you see the, the where people are checking in from all over. Um, a lot of times I like to judge it, of course, or predict it by moisture. So if you have a really wet summer, then your slowdown in the fall that we're in right now can actually last a lot bit longer because in really wet conditions, plants produce a lot of this of fruit and seeds and things like that. So the birds may be content for a while. Now, in, I know in drought years, especially here in the Midwest, you know, usually the, the September, October slowdown doesn't last nearly as long because they run out of, start running out of seeds quickly and they, uh, so they start returning the feeders. And I heard Melanie use one of my my favorite lines. I heard her today. Uh, we we talk about uh, doing our snow and ice dance. And hello, is that Fall River, Massachusetts? Is that Lewis? Yep. I, welcome in. Um, but we do start our doing our snow and ice dance about mid October because stress. Whenever we get cold temperatures, freezing and thawing, freezing precipitation, that. It causes the seeds, the, the, of course, the, the berries to dry up, but also seeds to start falling to the ground. And so that puts a little more stress on our birds that bring them into our bird feeders. And and as cruel as it may sound, uh, you know, and my saying has always been, if it's good for the bird watcher, it means it's usually pretty bad for the birds and vice versa. So if our, feed, if our feeders are slow, that usually means nature's providing and it's good for the birds out there and vice versa. If they're getting pushed into your feeders, because of the conditions, then it's harsher on them and bird feeders play an important part of helping them out. So, and there, and, you know, some of the things that you'll notice this time of year, little central Florida, John, Joanna last night had our first night, at one of the two house wrens that slept in a ledge on my porch didn't show up Yeah, They may have moved on. May our house finch our house, wrens left uh, a little while back. So we're not hearing or seeing house wrens right now, uh, hardly at all in our area. So uh, ours have bugged out already. So, but one of the first things you're going to notice a, a big slowdown in is peanuts. Uh, peanut feeders, which are very popular with a lot of people, uh, you know, they're very clean to feed. They're high in oil. They're high in fat. They're very good for birds. Um, they really slow down about this time. And when they do that, of course, they get can get wet. You need to throw them out. So, uh, and they also, you know, they can get buggy uh, at this time of year because of the, the they stay in uh, their containers longer, the heat, and humidity, things like that. You have to be careful. Um, and one of the things we recommend to dealing with this September slowdown and fall slowdown. And I've had some questions uh, via email uh, last night on Monday night's video um, that. One of the things we recommend, of course, is don't buy really big bags of seed. Um, this is a time of year that buying smaller bags. Uh, and if you do deal with a lot of humidity and uh, it, it, it's very hot, um, try putting them in the freezer, putting them in the uh, or in a refrigerator, keep them cool and dry. I, and my program Monday night was don't store your bird seed inside. And that uh, is a mistake a lot of people make because, uh, you know, they – especially this time of year when you're not going through it as fast, when it's there, it's going much slower, it tends to stay in your containers longer. Um, then you have a chance for the, the Mediterranean or, or Indian meal moss or pantry moss, or it, it, there's all kinds of names for it. But these little creatures, uh, they lay their eggs in the seed and it can, they can be in cornmeal, they can be in dog food, they can be in all kinds of things, but bird seed gets, it, it is a culprit too. And whenever these, the, the temperature reaches a certain 
level and I've heard it very all over the board. But for us, especially in August and September, when the temperatures are high, we start getting this. They start uh, hatching and these little tiny white caterpillars crawl out and they are a mess. They are, uh, they, and then they pupate into a little cocoon and they, and it's messy in your seed and it sticks together. Now the birds will eat these, but for storage, they're a real pain. And you don't want an infestation of these in your house. So that's why the whole video Monday night was about don't store your bird seed inside. It's because of this guy right here. Uh, they, they're a pain in the butt. So uh, I, I store my bird seed outside in a shady area uh, in, in the cans. And if they, you know, we're lucky that in the, where I'm at, we don't have super high humidity. Um, and I keep them so that the sun doesn't beat out on them. Now they can sweat in there and, and, and that's not good. But smaller bags. And if you do have a real problem with humidity, try putting your birdseed bags in the freezer for two weeks. Two weeks, it kills all the eggs, all the little uh, caterpillars, the moths, everything, um, and just feed it. Like I said in the video Monday night, I always did this for my mom. When I would take her a 20-pound bag of fine sunflower chips, she'd love to feed her goldfinches. First thing I did when I got there is I'd break it down into little Ziploc bags, and I'd put it in her freezer, and that way she could just pull out one bag at a time to put in their bird feeder so they didn't have to worry about bugs. And, you know, she didn't, she had some freezer space. She didn't, she lived alone, of course, so she didn't have to stock up you know, tons of stuff in there. But I know not everybody has that flexibility. They, they, you know, may, they may have uh, one or two refrigerators and freezers and things. And it's, uh, but if you do have a space, that is a real good way to deal with it. Hey, Steve Perry Fever from Michigan. Welcome in. Some of my birds are gobbling up the safflower and white millet. I'm seeing it at, at work. Can you tell me what birds might be coming in? I usually have doves and sparrows. Yeah, uh, this, you know, again, it, we're in transition. Now, I still have chickadees coming. I still have some goldfinches coming. And um, one of the things that really slows down, because uh, like I said about the, the peanuts, is the woodpeckers really slow down this time of year. And a lot of that is because they're storing food. The acorns are dropping, and they 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 they'll store a lot of that uh, in, into holes for the winter. And of course, squirrels are doing the same thing. They're they're uh, storing uh, acorns and walnuts and things like that. So uh, house finches have been very uh, act, still somewhat active, and that it just depends on where you are and what birds you have coming. Like I so said, we don't have a lot of the native sparrows yet. The chipping sparrows are pulling out; they they're finished nesting. Um, but our white throated sparrows, white crowned sparrows, all those winter sparrows. Um, have yet to arrive for us. And they probably won't arrive for a, a good month or so. Usually our juncos get here in early October. It can be mid-October some years. Uh, of course, they're, they are a native sparrow as well. So, um, but so that, yeah, it's hard to know for sure. Very slow here in Connecticut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're good. You still, they're still eating suet because that is the next uh, thing I was going to talk about that slows down in the fall. And that are, it is suet, um, it, especially up here. And the same thing. Okay, suet is the internal body cavity fat of, of a cow. And in winter, uh, we put it out and these suet cakes and plugs and they're mixed with uh, you know, peanuts and different things. But it, it is the nutritional substitute for insects in winter because a lot of the birds can't find insects. And so the suet really kind of fills that nutritional niche for them. And uh, it, But right now, with all the nuts dropping and the fruit available to them, uh, and there's still plenty of insects, suet kind of goes through a, a, a slow period right now, and then we, it picks back up with stress. Now, you guys to the north, you're going to get freezing temperatures a whole lot quicker than we will, um, and so you, your suet will pick up and your peanuts will pick up quicker than us. But down here in the middle part of the country, you know, we've always kind of set up unofficially the, the bird feeding, fall bird feeding season really starts about mid-November. Um, and then a lot of it doesn't kick in until early December. But it, whenever Melanie made the comment about doing our snow and ice dance, the quicker we get those freezing temperatures, the the quicker the, the bird feeder season comes in. And for somebody who sells bird seed for a living, we like to get those cold conditions in here uh, fairly early in the season because it gets people in the mood to feed birds. Now, you guys who are very dedicated bird feeding people, um, you know, are going to feed no matter what. But believe it or not, there are there are a lot of people who only feed birds when conditions are really bad. They feel sorry for them. We call them the sympathetic bird feeders. 
And they, you know, mama, mom, grandma used to throw out bread for the birds when there was snow on the ground. And that's the only time they feed birds. So, you know, that it makes a difference. Whereas most of us who feed birds, no matter what, uh, we don't change our feeding habits just because, you know, weather. But a lot of people kick in and feel sorry. All right. Blue Jays here in Tyler, Texas. Okay, good. Yeah, they're still coming for the peanuts right there. Unit 10, we have a few Rufus hummingbirds migrating in central Georgia. Wow, very beautiful. Yep. Yeah, a few winter down there. That is great. We, you know, it's rare here. Northeast Ohio. Hello, straightforward. <laughs> Melanie, hello from another Melanie. There you go. <laughs> yeah, good thing. I love it. Were you named after Gone with the Wind? She was. And uh, we have nuthatches, titmice, chickadees, woodpeckers coming to our peanut feeder, only cardinals and house finches and seafoods. So, Alyssa, so, they're, yeah, so your peanut feeders are still active right now. Yep, absolutely. Straightforward. See, I have the doves and sparrows picking up the ground feed. I'd like to know how to not spook the doves. Yeah. Doves are naturally pretty shy because everything likes to eat them. That's for sure. They have to be pretty... Um, pretty sensitive to outside influence tons of carolina chickadees and dip mice in florida seems like all i see i'm a beginner with one nut and fruit blend feeder what should i put out as a second feeder um i would probably think a finch feeder would be your next um item uh, to invest in down there a lot of uh goldfinches winter that far south and of course you'll have house finches as well so you, you you know your your nut and fruit blend is going to be more for all around feeding, but I my next step would be to invest in a good finch feeder down there. Absolutely, Joanna. Are there any com companies that sell suet cakes without nut seed corn? But I'm getting tired of making my own. With yes, the bird feeder companies. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, suet companies. There is such thing as pure suet. It has a very low melting point, so. Uh, you don't want to use it unless it's in good and cold conditions because it gets gooey, ooey, black really fast. Uh, so usually only in winter. Uh, but to me, basic uh, suet cakes like peanut treat from CNS, which is basically just peanuts and and suet, and those are my that's my num number one selling cake and the one I recommend the most in the store. There, the difference between a cheap suet cake, it, it, like you say, is that they feel it fill it with fillers like seeds and cornmeal. Now, nuts, I don't mind. Nuts are high nutrition, high value uh, but, uh, the reward and, and suet cake. So I don't mind that, so they, not at all. So, all right. Are the H-frame feeder poles like, like yours still available? You know what? I, uh, I, the owner of the company who made those uh, T-post connectors was in our store just a while back and I begged him to bring back uh, those T post connectors because people want them and they they discontinued them and he said a lot of it had to do with production but they're going to revisit and hopefully they get us back in production so the company is Irva uh, out of Chicago Illinois and uh, they make great stuff but that I, I've had people that said they they were able to they're very creative and they were able to make their own T post connectors to make the the goalposts and things so um, you, right now you unless you can luck up and find them somewhere. Uh, you kind of have to improvise and build your own. So one day I hope we're going to get them back. So that's for sure. All right. Now the, yep. Yep. I did do it. Sometimes you have to do it for yourself. That's right. Just started picking back up when at, at the feeder here's very dry here all summer, right? Well, you may have a, a, a you know, a very short, um, season with it was very being very dry like I said at the beginning you're right well the you know one thing that you can always do this time of year and you know if you watch me you're in a regular follower you know i'm going to talk about water um they, because especially in dry conditions there is nothing more important than a reliable clean source of water for birds and, and we talk about them having to, to bathe in it to preen their feathers and things but drinking water clean drinking water so even if your feeders are slow, make sure you've got uh, a clean water source for them. Uh, that is 365 days a year. It's, it's sing the single most important thing you can do. Uh, I did have a question today that uh, she didn't want to, to like to feed birds, uh, but she still wanted to help them. And I immediately told her, make sure you have water. 
uh, it, it is uh, it's so important, especially if you're anywhere uh, it, where it's really dry. Yes, Gone with the Wind. <laughs> she was named after Gone with the Wind, too. Yep, that, that's where Melanie got her name from. You are welcome. The same problem, constantly flying in my, in my window. Uh, so are you talking about bird collisions with the windows? Uh, uh, not sure. Thank you, Mark. The suet with the nuts help with other birds during the winter. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it, to me, it's just the best suet cake there is. And you just don't, I mean, I've done my program on suet cakes, you know, which is the better. And when you turn a suet cake over, uh, if you look and you see the millet seeds and corn and all that stuff in it, that's a cheap suet cake. And it is not nearly as good for the birds, nutritionally valuable. Um, but if you look through and the ingredients are beef fat and peanuts, then you definitely have, that's a much better suet cake. So, or mixed tree nuts and things like that. Those are high value uh, foods for birds. So they, that's the ones that we recommend the most for sure. All right. Well, it's the H frame. Uh, we, some people call it the goalpost, you know, the H frame. Not feeder, so it's the feeder station. The feeder station outside my window behind me over here has two 80 inch poles, two 80 inch poles, to, and there's a pole running between them like a goalpost in football is what it looks like. Uh, and I have a, a cross platform feeder on the on that crossbar, and on each of the two poles, I have heads with feeders hanging from them. Um, uh, yeah, they, like I said, we. We still sell every part of that except for that those um, T post connectors that, that makes that cross piece possible and really stabilizes the poles. Birdie eighty one, happy hi from Alabama. Just bought a bubbler rock mountain. Exciting, see, absolutely. Again, keep that water moving. It keeps it fresh, and the birds are drawn to it like a magnet. And you guys down in Alabama, you are you know, on the opposite of what I'm talking here about, you know, everybody from the north kind of losing their birds and things really getting slow. Well, you guys down south are, are, are the recipient of all these birds coming in down there. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it can get quite busy at your feeders. I know hummingbirds especially have been really busy down there. I've gotten some reports from you guys and just how busy it has been down there. It's great. All right. All right. I always freak out. They peek out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Birds have to be defensive. That's for sure. Yeah, the robins in that picture, that is a wonderful thing. That, that, absolutely. All right. Let's see. Um, I, I'm throwing a picture of black oil sunflower because this was a question that I got about uh, this time of year and, you know, not wanting to keep as much seed around and wanting to really simplify the, the feeder, the feeders this time of year. And by default has always been black oil sunflower and, you know, and cost effective uh, the, the mixes and the blends and especially they have fruit in them. And that's it. that drives up the cost of a bag of bird seed. And, you know, you, you diversify their diet and you're doing them favors and, and you'll get attract a lot of different birds, but for, for this time of year, and especially if you're needing to be cost effective uh, in your uh, your bird feeding, there's nothing better than a straight black oil sunflower. The more birds like it than any other seed, and every taste, every you know it, uh, the survey and and tests that have been done and and studies that you know which, which bird seeds will nothing um, is accepted more widely than black oil sunflower. And luckily, it is pretty cost efficient. And we have just really gotten our first price decreases in uh, for the fall, for which, which you know we're waiting for the new harvest to come from the fields. Um, but what happens is this time of year, the farmers are having to prepare for the harvest to come out of the field. So they're having to move out a lot of their seed that have been in their silos and things like that. So they tend, the prices tend to drop in the fall in anticipation of the new harvest, especially if the projection is the harvest is going to be pretty good. Yeah, they've had some rain and uh, got enough water and they think they're going to, they're going to be harvesting it. And then it's a race to get it in out of the fields before the snow and ice and things like that, especially up in the Dakotas. North Dakota is one of the biggest states for producing black hole sunflowers. So, all right. Oh gosh, yeah. Doves when they when they when doves get flushed, they tend to fly rapidly anywhere, and 
you know, a part of what I've always done is I have my feeders fairly close to my windows. So anytime they, they get flushed, they don't have enough speed to, to hit the windows and, and really get hurt. Um, it's those ones that are flying from a long distance. So when they collide into windows, that can really get hurt for sure. Joanna, is it okay to add something to bird bass to help keep water clean? There are some uh, natural enzymes out there that uh, we, we sell the store and we recommend if you, it, it, but they don't work on all algae. The, 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 the most important thing, the way to really keep uh, the bird bass clean is to change the water every day or every other day. I mean, and, and you know, a good, a good bird bath is a shallow bird bath. So it should be evaporating within a couple of days, most, most places, but just a quick dump out in, in fresh water. And that will really keep the algae at bay. It just, but if you got a bigger, deeper, the holes a lot more, it's usually not as good for birds anyways, just because they need to be able to get in it and bathe. So they need that shallow water, but those are, yeah, that, it, it can, that can be a challenge. Well, both, uh, you know, mosquitoes need still water to lay their eggs on because they're, when they lay their eggs on the water, the, the little baby mosquitoes, if you will, the pupae have to breathe oxygen. So they can't lay their, water, their, their, their eggs on moving water. So if you've got a bubbler or something that keeps the water agitated, one, that keeps the algae down too, but it also helps with the mosquito control. But if you're dumping it out on a daily basis, you're controlling the mosquitoes anyway, so. Is it okay to use shelled peanut? Are you talking about uh, when it shelled is like, is it, are the peanuts in the shell or out of the shell? Out of the shell is what we recommend. Uh, they, more birds can use that. Now the big in shell peanuts are great for the blue jays and there are a few birds that can use them. The squirrels love them. But when we're talking about shelled peanuts uh, and mesh feeders and mixed into bird seed mixes, definitely use shelled peanuts. I had a customer years ago who came in and he was standing looking at the, at the shelled peanuts <laughs> and he, I never forget, he said, you're kidding me. I said, what? He said, you have shelled. They're already shelled. I said, yeah, we've been selling them for years. He said, so I've been sitting in front of the television shelling peanuts to give to the birds for no reason. <laughs> and I'm like, mm, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, he was buying them at the grocery store or something and, and hand shelling each one of them. No, I, the shelled peanuts are a mainstay in, in, our, in our store for sure. A fountain, including the concrete bird part. This is so fun to watch. Birds all, oh, absolutely. They, yeah, they, cleaning those fountains is the more challenging part because you kind of have to take them apart and scrub the rocks and put them back together. Uh, but boy, they are a magnet to birds, especially in migration this time of year. Yeah, they need those. I'm a newbie. I upgraded my feeder and bought the Squirrel Buster Plus, best bird feeder on the market all around, I do believe. I have it hanging, but I want to order a pole. How high should I have it? Well, um, the, the, whenever it comes to shipping poles, we have a three piece, 80 inch pole that we can ship. Uh, but I, I, I like to have the feeders, you know, ideally about at least four to five feet off the ground. And that's to save birds from cats because they'll sit underneath the feeders and jump up and they can snatch them off the feeder at about four and a half feet and squirrels can jump straight up four and a half feet, but you got a squirrel buster. So you don't have to worry about that. But deer, if you've got deer problems, then we want the, the bottom part of the feeder to be about six feet off the ground uh, because they can on their hind legs and get their tongue up in the feeders and things like that. So depends on what your issue is going to be. Now we, we, we sell pole extenders, for that 80 inch pole can get it up even higher. So 28 inch extenders uh, and things like that. So it really does depend on uh, what, what problem you are facing there with the, uh, with the critters that you're trying to, uh, if it's just squirrels, the 80 inch pole works just fine, but if you've got deer, it's gotta be about six feet. Sunflower. Shelled sunflower. Shelled sunflower, sunflower hearts. Okay, that makes more sense. And that is what we see in this image. This is mainly uh, uh, whole sunflower that's at the shell. And also there are some peanut hearts in here as well and some bigger nuts. So yeah, uh, they, it's the boneless, skinless chicken, which is kind of a morbid uh, analogy. But yeah, it, there's no waste. And um, again, another I got great one for the freezer. Uh, and if you're this time of year, because without a shell, that makes them a little more vulnerable to the, to the eggs of the, the meal moss. So 
off topic, but I also have looked into using stuff to keep the mosquitoes out and wondering how it would affect my dragonflies and birds. That's interesting. Um, I would think the natural enzymes uh, there would work, but uh, when it comes to with the mosquitoes, I really get the keep the water moving. Uh, back whenever uh, we had the very first scare with the West Nile virus, uh, the co a company came out with something called the water wiggler. And all it does is it spins and agitates the water in, in, in a ripple effect. And that was great for uh, keeping mosquitoes from being able to lay eggs and bird bass. And it was a hit, huge hit. Um, and we still sell, we sell a lot of those. Um, and they just run off a couple of these cell batteries. There is a solar version of it that, that will work, you know, if you get plenty of sunshine and it just agitates the water. So that may be something you want to you wanna try with a real natural way of doing that. Hi, Bobby. From I know you're from Colorado. I use this time to really clean feeders and bird. But it's, yeah, and some uh, seeing some sick birds. Does it take about two weeks to, to disperse sick birds? That's a good question. It it, it can vary. We uh, a couple of weeks ago we did our bird feeder cleaning day. We do that every year in September, and the, it, and we do that to send the message that this, this is a great slow time with your feeders to clean them. Uh, and of course you should clean your feeders if you can once a month. It is, uh, and, but if you see big, uh, especially the, the conjunctivitis, the eye disease and house finches, if you're seeing any sick birds, definitely take them down and, uh, uh give them a really good cleaning and use a 10% bleach solution to kill any of the bacteria. Um, and yeah, if you, if you're seeing a bird, it, it, and you, especially if you're seeing any more than one, you may want to leave your feeders down for a couple of weeks. And there's no better time to do that than right now because there's so much natural food available for it. That's a really good question. Thanks for asking that. They call it no mess. Yeah, you're right. And, 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 I, 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 we say, I call it no waste. And, and that's because everything in this bag of seed is food. There are no hulls. Um, and so you're paying, you know, for a bag of this seed, you're, it's a hundred percent food you're buying. Whereas in black oil sunflower, when you buy that seed, you're buying 60% waste. And that is the hulls. So by weight, you know, the heart weight inside, you know, that, which is what they eat, but the rest of it. So, you know, it kind of really washes out. You pay more for hullless seed, but you're getting 100% food. And, of course, uh, the uh, hullless seed really can't germinate. So that's a good thing for a lot of people. You're very welcome. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Lightness joined late. Appreciate your channel. Thank you so much. And, and you guys... Really uh, appreciate the support and, and uh, any thumbs up and likes and uh, that you can give us. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, I know most of you guys are subscribers, but that, that really helps us. And leaving comments, all that, uh, you know, that helps the algorithm uh, with the YouTube and, and, and gets me placement and things like that. And more people that have joined, the, the more I can do these programs. I love doing them. Absolutely. All right. Where are we? Our property shares a fence with state forest. <laughs> nice. Most concerned about bear snacking on my feet. There are many of them cruising for the trash and snacks. Yeah, I've gotten some bird, some bear questions with this uh, video from Monday night. Fortunately, we don't have to deal with them, um, you know, in this part of the world. But I know, you know a good friend of mine uh, used to work for me, lives in New Hampshire and or, uh, Vermont, that area, and she has to deal with the bears and. I know that you do have to take extra precautions because their nose is infallible. They will find uh, the food. And I know for people who you know, have dog food outside and bird feeders, they can be a real pain to deal with. And you're welcome. Water wigglers is a great investment. They really are, Suzanne. You're right. I mean, it, it, they, it's so simple. There's not even an on-off switch. You just put the batteries in it and, and close it and tighten it down and they wiggle until the batteries run out. And it is, they just run 24 seven. They're not going to burn out. It's great. All right. Thank you, Birdie 81. Absolutely. And thank you for checking in on there. And you're right. Birding is very addictive. It is a wonderful hobby. You get to see them sit and, and eat. Yep. Yeah, and, and, and the enjoyment. And I not only has always loved the peanut feeders, uh, because when the, the birds come into the peanut feeders, 
the mash peanut feeders, they don't just grab a seed and fly away. She loves to watch them as they peck and they ease it out and you get to watch the birds longer. So yeah, uh, you, get, you know, you can't under, uh, overvalue how much enjoyment we get out of them. Some birds seem to prefer the whole seed. I noticed that my chick, they, they, yeah. Oh, really? Interesting. My chickadees love the, uh, the fine sunflower chips or the medium sunflower chips too, but they do like to crack open the seeds. They, they, the, the chickadees especially like to hold the sunflower seed between their feet. And they'll, you'll see them beat on it with their, their bill and crack it open. And the sa safflower, the same thing. I mean, and a lot of it, I, I, I'm telling you, it's just like you wouldn't want to eat French fries every day, all day. They want to vary their diet. They want to, uh, and the tr nutritional variance they get between a safflower seed and a sunflower seed. I mean, we all need variety in our diet. Of course, they're getting insects and things like that in the wild. Uh, but you're right. They, they, some of them, you know, they're creatures of habit. They love to crack seeds. They're going to do it. Kristen's been putting out sunflower hearts, but rough count had 30 plus goldfinches in my feeder this morning. Nice. Where, what part of the world are you in, Kristen? Some noisy juveniles in the crowd. Yep. Yeah. They're, they're, they're still, the, the babies are still coming in with the adults and begging. They'll, they'll, they'll hang around as long as the parents will feed them. That's for sure. Dan Zart, I put out safflower only feed feeder for the car Cardinals a couple months ago, but those house pairs emptied it all out on the ground. That's what they do. I had a, yes, safflowers definitely can germinate. Um, and uh, they, the house sparrows and the blackbirds, they hate safflower seed and they'll throw it out on the ground. Um, you know, and that what we've always advised there is if you don't mix it, if you've got that situation and just put a little bit of safflower in it because they're going to throw it all out. And usually after you do that once or twice, they know there's nothing else in that feeder. So they'll they'll tend to leave it alone. So hopefully that'll work for you. All right. Remember, I'm a newbie. Bought some binoculars with their, they were cheap. <laughs> Please suggest a brand and type. Well, I don't know if you can see my shirt, ah, but I'm an Nikon man. I, I love Nikon binoculars. I have been with them for 20, 25 years. Uh, I think for the, for their money, uh, they are high, they are absolutely the best binoculars overall on the market, especially for the price. Uh, our best-selling line, the one I've recommended for my bird watchers for a year, are the Monarch line. Um, the, the Monarch 5s in particular is my best-selling binocular. And you come on one of my bird hikes and you see how many people on, a bird, on my bird hike have Monarch binoculars. And um, if you really want to invest in a great pair of binoculars, I like the Monarch HGs as the ones I use personally. Um, they're a little more, right? but uh, the, the color clarity and, and, and resolution and uh, the way they, they the, the light... Uh, the way they handle bright light is, is fantastic. And I, I can't recommend it highly enough that you can pay three times as much for the, the, the binocular and not get 5% better view. So yeah, I, I'm a big backer of Nikon. So all right, let's see. I really enjoyed your, your aggressive mockingbird video. <laughs> Thank you. You know what? That has been one of my most popular videos I've ever done. Uh, the number one uh, untold this one, um, yeah, the, uh, the keeping bees out of hummingbird feeder has been a very popular one. The morning dove one and the mockingbird video has been very popular. I bet more people have problems with mockingbirds even than I realize. Yeah. Melanie is pointing out that we do have the Monarch fives on our uh, online store. And is so. that the one I could post the link for? Is that the right one? Uh, yes, that is exactly the one. Lower Hudson Valley of New York, Kristen. Okay, absolutely. Yeah, well, you guys are from all over. I love it. Joanna, you, how long can birds go without food in winter? Oh, boy. There, when there's a snowstorm, we immediately clear off the platform feeders for birds. Yeah, it, it, now, if you guys get a lot of snow. Um, you know, your bird feeders are, can be the difference between life and death. You know, birds have to survive. Now, a lot of those birds that, that, that live in that environment, they're adapted to it. And they're much better at finding food than, than we even realize. And, you know, uh, they have to rely on certain trees that stay above the snow. Uh, there's, there, you know, seed sources, birches and beaches and several different species up there. Um, 
uh, where they they're very dependent on those those uh, seeds and sources in winter. But your bird feeders are really important when there's a lot of snow cover, and we see that here in the Midwest. And uh, whenever we do get snow, uh, those stretches of bird feeders are really really busy. Absolutely. You are very welcome. Absolutely. Straightforward. I'll have my party tree going soon. My big old sycamore. Yeah, they love the seed balls. They really do. I love my party birds, chickadees, sit mice, goldfinches. It, 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 they give us incredible joy. Alyssa, what is a good seed slash food for feeding ducks? Uh, oh. um, usually for ducks, we recommend crack corn, you know, on the ground and the ed edges of the water. Uh, and they, you know, there a lot of people throw on popcorn and things like that, which is not that great for them, especially if they have any salt to them at all. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, cracked corn is probably the default when it comes to feeding uh, uh, ducks like that. Straightforward. Oh, you guys are communicating here. Let's see. The oh, the link to the binoculars on there. Melanie just put up. Did Absolutely. The, uh, bye bye and the eight. My fridge has become a bird food storage. Yep. And I had a goldfinch pair come in with babies a couple of days ago. Yep. The goldfinches have finished nesting now in most of their range, and they are bringing the young in. And they look really green uh, compared to the yellow of the moms and the dads. So, but yep, the, the, the babies, they don't know what to do. They have to, you know, the, the parents have to teach them, you know, the food sources and pass food to, for them and then try to make them feed on their own. You're right. All right, let's see. They were on. They loved your cornfield. Interesting. Now during breeding season, their main they they, uh, they eat a lot of insects, and they may be getting uh, you know, the bugs in that as well. That's that's what they're much more dependent on. You are very welcome. Feeding is picking up. No, now since you know you guys has it denise have you guys gone through a, a real slow period and it's now picking back up is that right um just wondering where you because you're so far north and west i wondering well the pad i know you're hummingbirds you, your migration and you guys will still have some um but seed feeders i would imagine a lot of those pulled out and you should be getting those guys pushing down from the alaska and the northwestern parts of the of Canada into the your area. So uh, you, you should have a busy season coming up here pretty soon. So, but remember food, water, shelter, and you want to try to warn during the September slowdown into October, keep the seed fresh, rotate it as much as you can get, get uh, uh, one of my customers asked the other day uh, on Monday was how do we keep uh, the bugs under control in the store because we have seed obviously available to them all year on round. And I said, these guys right here, moth traps, these are pheromone traps. Uh, and they have a sticky uh, paper on the inside and they a little square pheromone that attracts the males to them. And, it, and I keep them out 365 days a year in the store. Uh, we try to keep it cooler in the store as we can. And also we re rotate our seed effectively. We the state, the seed, try not to keep it in the store. And again, same thing, just like you, we order less seed this time of year and keep sex uh, because we don't want a lot of seed uh, in the store for extended periods of time. So that kind of, we just mirror what you guys need to do. Yeah, you guys, I imagine you guys are getting colder up there. Absolutely. I didn't think about the bugs. Yeah, they, now of course, duck, ducks are going to eat, there's a lot of aquatic weeds and a lot of aquatic insects they eat. Uh, but when people want to, <laughs> you know, feed them and, and, and bring them up close so they can watch them. I don't know how you guys can hear Sophie back there, but she's, uh, She's getting anxious. She won't. I mean, she wants to go out. How to how to avoid house sparrows? There is no such thing. Spilling all my safflower cart uh, scared uh, uh, cardinal scared by sparrows. Yeah, the uh, sparrows are a very tough battle, and you know, there, a lot of it is the can't beat them, join them approach, and that is away from your main feeders, keep a source of millet for them, because that's what they want, and keep it on the ground. Uh, and in your feeder, safflower is very effective uh, because they don't like it very much and just keep that to itself and then other seeds. But if you give them a source of millet, which we usually recommend not 
feeding because it attracts sparrows. But if you have a real bad problem with them, that's one way they can't feed them, join them, you know. So that's it's something you can try. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, some people will recommend dry cat food. I do not do recommend that because that is a starling magnet. Um, uh, there, a lot of the birds that you want to attract, uh, the cat food is not a good idea because it's going to attract more that you don't want to attract to their feeders. Um, I, I know, I know there's some flickers and things will eat it and it's not nutritionally formulated for, for birds either. So, um, yeah, that's not, not on my list. I wouldn't definitely wouldn't recommend that. All right, Steve, here, here for Nikon, as always. Thank you, Mark and Melanie. Thanks, Steve, for joining in. Uh, David never did join in tonight. He must have had a family obligation. So they the two of my originals and are with us every month. All right. Yes, absolutely. We do appreciate your likes and shares. Uh, Melanie got that out. I don't get a chance. Yeah. <laughs> If if you're rotating your seed quickly, yeah, the malls don't become a problem. You're right. Yeah, that forward, that is a lot with that baby, uh, those adults to attend to. They 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 will hatch for, but usually they, you know, they lose them uh, over time and hopefully they're good to get one or two to survive. But yeah, that, that, that parent must have been working really hard to keep those guys, the males happy. Yeah, yeah. Straight up talking about the dog or cat food. Yeah, you know, never. Yeah, good gosh. They're, they're talking about drawing raccoons and possums. Yeah, cat food will do that. I put out a chicken scratch block to keep the squirrels busy. When and that's yeah, some people that that has been an effective way for some people. They keep that especially away from their feeders and back toward the back. You no, know? you know it, it. There's. I love this hobby, and I love, <laughs> and I'm glad you guys do too because they. It is certainly uh, wonderful, and, and and we get so much enjoyment out of it, and we really appreciate your support. If I missed anybody's comments or questions, I really apologize. It's kind of been fast and furious tonight. Kind of thought after the success of Monday Night's video that we'd have more people in, and, and it looks like we have. So I really appreciate it. If you would, like I said, give us a like, give us a share. Uh, if you're local, come on, let's talk birds is what we always say. Thank you so much for your support and your participation we'll be back on live in a couple of weeks let's see got a couple more coming in here at the end is it worth putting out mealworms on that yeah that, and the right well yes mealworms are great any time of the year now the live mealworms especially especially when they have babies during the nesting seasons when most people do that but i keep dried mealworms in mixed in with my bird seed in the winter months the carolina wrens love them all through the winter so absolutely you know, anytime you did go through a slow period. I bet you did. Yeah. Again, it's like I said, from north to south, it's just what we experience now. You probably have already been through for a period of it, and you guys south, may, may, just it's still coming. Thank you. Absolutely. You are welcome. Hey, Carlton. My longtime insurance agent. Now, he's retired now. Thanks for joining in, guys. Say hi to Ann for me. All right. Your videos have been so helpful. I am so glad to hear you say that. And I'll study the questions and learn together. I, you're welcome. Thank you. You know, Kathy, that's great to hear. I really love to, to, to get that input. And I know we're helping people. Yeah, chicken scratch blocks. We used to be able to get them. We can't anymore. They're kind of a big square, uh, just clump of, of grains that uh, you can uh, birds can peck on and, and – uh, the chickens can peck on and they, and, and of course they're fairly good size and people put them up on a stump or something like that. So that's what they look like. But again, again, thank you guys. Uh, we will back on and get a uh, Martin calendar, hit that bell to make sure you get notifications when I'm on that uh, send in ideas for programs. I, I, it really helps. I think the next one in two weeks will be our um, October wild bird update we do one of those every month and i think it'll be on schedule for that one so hope you guys can join in thanks again so much everybody have a wonderful evening good night <laughs>